So in the very last section of chapter five, goes into a lot of the attractive forces in compounds. This section 5.9. Uh, so mostly it's discussing um, when we have polar molecules, um, basically the positive and negative, the opposites are going to attract. Okay, so attractive forces, opposites attract, um, which is all important if we were wanting to have uh, kind of go on in chemistry and go further in chemistry. They'd be important things for us to, to discuss. Um, for most of you, this is the only chemistry course that you're going to take. Um, so I just wanted to talk about one very important attractive force uh, in chemistry, but it also is extremely important in biology. I know there's very few times that you hear me say that there's a uh, <clears throat> direct correlation into uh, biology, uh, which a lot of you are taking that course next. Uh, but the hydrogen bond, very important uh, in biology. It's actually how and why DNA has the structure, the three-dimensionality uh, to it that it does. Okay. The hydrogen bond, um, it's, it's actually not really a bond. We call it a bond, but it's more of, um, it really is more of this just attractive forces, okay. which is it's gray area. It's not very specific. Um, what happens in the hydrogen bond is there are three atoms interacting together, but those three atoms are not actually bonded together. Okay, and we kind of need this trifecta to happen in order for that to be a hydrogen bond. So we have uh, the hydrogen bond, it's between three atoms. And this is a very, very specific bond. So our three atoms are very specific. Okay, we are going to have a hydrogen bonded to oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. Those are the only three possibilities. And this, this hydrogen that's bonded to the oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine uh, is going to interact with another oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine in a different molecule. And sometimes it doesn't have to be a different molecule. Um, when you get into biology, um, we're talking about organic chemistry. Um, molecules can be big enough. You know, they're going to have, you know, 10, 20, 100 uh, carbon atoms in there. So really, really big molecules. Um, they can hydrogen bond kind of to themselves if the molecule is big enough. Um, but typically, we're, we're just going to talk about between two different molecules. So we have a hydrogen that's bonded to O, N, or F. Uh, and then that hydrogen that's bonded is going to also interact with another oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine that's on a different molecule that's also bonded to a hydrogen. Uh, so we're going to have X, which X can be either oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. Okay, we're going to have that hydrogen actually bonded, so solid line. And then it's going to interact. Okay, Interact is what makes this not an actual bond. It's more of a force. So we represent that interaction by a dashed line. And it's going to interact with another oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. This is the trifecta that has to happen. Okay, so a very technical term 
a trifecta. Not actually sure if that's truly a word or if it's just kind of a made up word. Um, so maybe uh, just in case that's, we'll put it in quotations, right? You can put anything in quotations if you make it up. Uh, so we have a trifecta or you could kind of think of it as a hydrogen sandwich. So in a molecule, if we had two molecules, water is an example where we have hydrogen bonds. And if we have one water molecule, by the way, this is a tetrahedral in shape. It has four things around that oxygen, two of the hydrogens and then two lone pairs. So we would call this a tetrahedral electron group arrangement. And that's just a little side note. So here's our hydrogen that's bonded to an oxygen. So we have the H line X portion. <clears throat> then this hydrogen here okay, needs to go and interact with another oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. Typically it's the same element because you have the same molecule uh, present. So we're going to have kind of this interaction between an oxygen from another water molecule. It's this entire component that's the hydrogen bond. Okay, all of those components have to be there. Um, a lot of people, and, and biology I'm sure also does this, and a lot of chemists do this, uh, but we kind of call this the hydrogen bond, um, but this can't happen unless that is also happening. So we have to have kind of all three components involved. So for um, a test question, there there weren't really any good QMPs um, for looking at this. So, so for a test question, um, you know, we, we're not going to be able to draw these molecules out on uh, Moodle. So I would be more looking at, um, you know, which molecules could uh, hydrogen bond. If there's not an oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine in the molecule, uh, in the formula of it, it can't hydrogen bond. Okay. Or I might ask, you know, what are the three elements that hydrogen can form a hydrogen bond with? And you would say oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. Mm -hmm.